Hey guys, it's Asif at thinkasif.ca. I've got Eva and Laura from Family Mediation Group here. And um, we're going to talk about the differences between going through a lawyer or going through mediation, uh, pros and cons, and some of the things that we just didn't know. So welcome, <laughs> girls. Thank you for Thank joining. You. Uh, so talk to me. What is the difference when someone's going through a divorce? What's the difference between going through a lawyer or a mediation group? Well, the differences are immense. I think me and Laura can pretty much agree, right? Okay. We could so talk forever. We could talk forever on this topic because okay. we're so passionate about it. Okay. Okay. Um, there's huge cost consequences uh, between going to court versus settling in mediation. Okay. Huge. Um, there's also a big component about what information you have available. So in mediation, it can be a little bit more holistic versus in court. It's very dry to the bone. Um, also, we can be much more creative in mediation. So we mm -hmm. can kind of start there in those okay. different do, those okay. different areas yeah okay. let's let's start with um what can be disclosed and what can be disclosed i think confidentiality was something we mm -hmm. chatted about so about yeah that. so in in mediation you have uh you a hundred percent hopefully you know privileged conversation and confidentiality so all the all the discussions are protected by okay. the agreement that you sign uh right at the, the onset of entering mediation process mm -hmm. um very rare is that there is a mediation that it's called open mediation so there is a mediator who um does a report at the end uh, but those are very high conflict, very rare cases, um, and uh, I don't think we will typically ever even those do cases end up, like mm -hmm. end up in court. End up in court, yeah, and, or they've come from right. court into mediation, and right. the next but step is back in court. The majority is they're completely confidential sessions mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we want people to be able to come up with ideas mm -hmm. on how to settle. And then what we don't want is for someone to use that against you if you did go in court and say, "Oh, well, he offered me a dollar for the matrimonial home, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. now why is he putting up a fight?" No, it's completely. <laughs> okay. Confidential, so okay. you have the flexibility to come up with different ideas and say what you want at the mediation table. Okay, so mm -hmm. on the, ver the 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 opposite side of that mm -hmm. within the lawyer. The opposite lawyer. side of that is uh, full exposure. Yeah, okay. of all of your most private, intimate uh, details. details of your relationship, of your finances, of your anything. You know what your neighbor said about it, your romantic life, your yeah. affairs, whatever. So everything um, in court yeah. is public record. Oh. And that also Online. includes for the CRA, <laughs> right? So we get oh. people a ton of times who maybe haven't um, paid their taxes or are self-employed and maybe aren't reporting their full income. Everything is on the table when you go to court. Also, your okay. personal details, okay. right? Um, and that's searchable by anybody. So essentially, if I'm going through a divorce or separation and I go through mediation, that's private. Whatever we talk about stays there. Yeah. Stays there. If yeah. I go through court mm -hmm. that's public record so joe off Anybody the street can, can look you. me up and find out mm -hmm. any detail they want every yeah. dirty detail they want all your income all your personal relationships what people have said about you and remember in court people make allegations that may not necessarily be true or maybe mm -hmm. inflammatory right mm -hmm. and so you'll see a lot of notable people or people with um high power jobs don't even step foot in court Mm -hmm. Right. Because the allegations can sometimes be so damaging to their professional lives. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. OK. So, wow. I, I had no idea about that. Let's talk from a cost standpoint. What's the difference between mediation and going through a lawyer? Tell me about the cost. Well, it can be significant. I mean, we all know what it's like to go to a lawyer. I'm a lawyer, mm -hmm. right? I used to take a lot of cases to court. However, they used to be legal aid. So they were much more cost effective. But um, as a lawyer, I can tell you that when you're going to court, there is an amount of work that is you know, un inconceivable for the lawyer to prepare. And the more work for the lawyer to prepare means the higher cost for the client. Mm -hmm. So most lawyers charge between 250 to 450 an hour, right? And it, it costs at least five grand each person to just get into court easily yeah. and then there's a nine-step process before trial so if you are one of the unlucky ones to get to trial that's hundreds of thousands of dollars each and most lawyers know that if there's a matrimonial home the clients will have to sell their home in order to pay the lawyer okay so <laughs> so that's going to court that's the financial so, picture that a lot of people what, are what, what's the of. low end what's the high end for going to court? On, on average yeah uh, easily, the, uh, our stats are in between uh, twenty-five to forty-five per person. Thousand, thousand. Twenty-five thousand to forty-five thousand per, yeah. person. per person. Per person. And yes. that's in legal bills. That's not the money you then have to spend in child support, spousal support, mm -hmm. selling your matrimonial that's just to come home. To a decision. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, she's opposite side of that. What's the mediation <laughs> side of that? Yeah. A lot of Laura and I, we have our our client files. You can easily, easily settle a file under five or six thousand dollars. Would you not agree with that? Combined. Yeah. Combined. Combined. Yes. And okay. what's great about the mediation uh, process is you you create essentially how much you're paying because the easier you are to agree to things as a as parents or as parties, then the cheaper it's going to be. And we say that to clients all the time. Mm-hmm. Even before we start the mediation, we, we we ask them, you know, if you can sit down at your kitchen table anywhere and uh, make a, you know, agree on something, this is going to m- go much faster, yeah. less less cost, less everything. And lots of people do have um, lots of points of agreement. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. there still remains. And what I like about it is that if they can't agree, for example, we have someone who cannot make a decision about whether to get long-term spousal support monthly or lump sum. And that's when we say we, we can bring in someone for, yes. uh, from, a, you know, like a financial uh, specialist or a mortgage or she wants a house as well. Mm-hmm. So that's something that, you know, a judge wouldn't really you care. Can't, you can't do that. A lawyer a... wouldn't really care. Okay. Like it wouldn't have any, you know, like any leg to stand on. Mm-hmm. In, in that kind of conversation, but for her, it matters. Right. So now this person, with the help of this financial person, will decide whether she wants monthly or a lump sum and how does a lump sum look like. You cannot do that gotcha. with a lawyer. The lawyer oh. will just take over everything mm-hmm. and you cannot bring... Well, in court, yeah, the judge... Ju- yeah. What we say is the you, it, if you're going to court, a judge is going to make a decision for your family and then they're going to go home at night to their own family. Mm-hmm. They don't have to live with the repercussion of that. Right. So making you sell off your home, making you rule over your RRSP, um, making you have to pay spousal support. They make that decision and then <laughs> their hands are washed of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas in mediation, we empower you to make your own decisions and we give you the information. We give you the support and be able to do that. Right. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, from a judge's standpoint or from a lawyer's standpoint, they're not versed in the financial aspects of all this stuff. I mean, they have a high level understanding. Mm-hmm. So they're making a decision for somebody else or a couple but they don't have the knowledge to make these decisions or they don't have the expertise so they're basically saying this is what you should do i don't mm-hmm. know what i'm talking about but you this is what you got to do they're they're talking from this perspective of legal entitlement yeah so they're saying this is what you're entitled to this mm-hmm. is what the law says and mm-hmm. this is what cases have done so mm-hmm. this is what you're getting mm-hmm. they're not looking at your financial picture they're not looking at your emotional your well-being yeah. and your personal needs and saying this is what's best for you as a person as you know as eva mm-hmm. they're saying well you're an applicant this is a divorce this is what you're entitled to and that's that that's their job Right. Mm -hmm. But what we hear from families is that that's not enough. Mm -hmm. Divorce encompasses every aspect of your life. And so the uh, decisions that you should make and the consequences that come from that should reflect that. And that's what Mm -hmm. we believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is hugely eye opening because, I mean, what are the stats of divorce in Canada right now? Well, we have uh, in general Mm -hmm. population, it's about 47 to 50 Mm -hmm. in other in other populations, uh, like, for example, police forces, uh, the uh, the uh, rate is 80 percent divorce. Whoa. Yeah. Police, EMT and firefighters have an 80 percent divorce rate. Also different areas. Right. So like a place like California has almost an 80 percent divorce rate. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot to do with different jurisdictions for us. Yeah, it's about 50 and it's wide ranging. So we have clients in their late 20s, young parents that are coming that are just starting their lives over. Mm -hmm. Really. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have on the opposite end. We have people in their 70s Mm -hmm. and I've even heard of cases in their early 80s well into retirement and Mm -hmm. they have very specific needs. Right. So this is not even a topic that is just for a small niche group. This Mm -hmm. this is this is applicable to half the population in the country. Totally. Right. And then, I mean, they may not be coming out public with it, but there's there's something going on and they're thinking about it. So this is relevant information Um, and just. Again, eye-opening in the sense that you could spend that much money going through the legal system versus mm-hmm. going through mediation, and then how they treat you, uh, mm-hmm. and then the fact that what's confidential and what's not confidential, these are all things that I guess your everyday consumer or everyday person does not know. That's right. Wow, this this is huge. So um, listen, I appreciate you guys taking the time talking about all this stuff. Uh, we've got a lot of other topics to talk about, but thank you for joining, and uh, we'll see you guys at the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.